What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We got a bunch of loose ends that we need to kind of tidy up on the FJ40 today. And then we got the entire interior we got to put together. We got seats, console, front and rear seats. Uh, we got it, the cage is just set in there. We got to bolt in the cage to the frame. We have all of our frame mounts already built, everything. It just needs to be bolted together. Entire dash, radio, bezel, speakers. There's a ton of stuff I want to get done on the inside. If you guys missed our first drive video, I was struggling. <laughs> I was sitting on a cardboard box. We have no shifter, so I was trying to lean down, shift this thing by hand off of the transmission with the thing not idling very good because I put a cam in it and the tune is just, it needs a lot of work on the tune, so it kept dying on me. It was a nightmare and I'm not gonna try that again until I actually have something to sit on, something to shift with, just to make driving it a little easier. So that's kind of the game plan. First things first, this entire roof, you can see it's not, I just, it's just set on right now. There's a whole gasket that we need to somehow install, so I'm just gonna have to kind of lift it, the roof up on myself get the gasket in there, hopefully get it lined up. Then we got to bolt that all on, get that all secured up. And then, like I said, start throwing interior together. We got a ton of stuff on the inside to get done. Also, we need to align the doors. We need to align body panels. There's just a lot of this thing is just kind of set together just temporarily for now. We need to kind of go finalize all that. So that's kind of the game plan with today's video. Well, we got these belts all figured out. The rears are good to go. There's plenty, I mean, the rear's mounted solid. It's not a slider seat. It's all right on the roll bar. Everything's good to go with that. The front seat's different story. I kind of didn't really think about this issue. Now these are a reclining and a sliding seat because it's a two door and to get kids or whatever in the back, you would fold the seats forward. Well, once I put these harnesses on, obviously tied into the roll bar back here, when I recline the seat forward, I can only get so much out of it. I mean, you see, you probably can't even, you're not even gonna fit a kid back there. So something I didn't foresee, I don't really, I'm not really sure what you would do 
to fix that. I mean, every you're supposed to obviously have a, a a bar behind your seat to where you tie your harnesses into. So I'm not really sure what to do at this point. Obviously, I mean, one option is you could put a retractable three point in it. That way you could just pull the strap, move it out of the way, but I don't want that. I already got the harnesses. I wanna figure out a way to make them work, but I, unless there's some sort of like a quick disconnect I could rig up back here. Go drop a comment. Let me know if you guys have any ideas for our seat belt situation. Other than that, interior is almost together. We got to kind of just finalize the radio, the speakers, the instrument cluster. Uh, I don't want to go too deep right now because once this thing is 100%, I'm 1000% sure all my wiring is good. I have to take all this wiring harness out and loom it all. So. I don't really want to just completely bury it. Um, I mean, I guess it already kind of is buried at this point, but I don't know, I gotta keep that in mind that we gotta take this entire dash harness, engine harness, every piece of wire in this truck, we have to take out and loom it all. So with that in mind, I don't know, I think I'm just gonna throw the radio in, we'll throw the bezel on, we'll kind of call that dash good for now. One thing we do have to do still is the, tie-ins for the roll cage these go from so basically i have plates sandwiching the body and then these bolt into some bushings that are right into my frame that are welded into the frame so very very strong all i got to do to tie in the cage is just six of these mounts that like i said mount from the cage to the frame the cage will be done uh one oh one other thing we got to do something with the transfer case shifter there's not enough there's not enough throw in the actual shifter and i gotta fix for that i think what i'm gonna do is just make a longer basically from the pivot to where the the linkage mounts i'm gonna make that point longer so i'm just gonna make a new handle for it and making that point longer the more i mean you can move the same the shifter the same amount but it's gonna throw on the bottom side it's actually gonna throw the linkage more so that's kind of the game plan with that i'm gonna try that see if we can get that four wheel drive or transfer case shifter figured out but other than that we are good to go so let's tackle the roll cage rest of the interior and transfer case shifter <laughs> guys roll cage is all tied in we are good to go there now this i got the transfer case shifter handle off this is what we got to remake so basically this is the pivot bolt hole right here and then this is where the linkage mounts i'm just going to extend this down about an inch so we have two issues with this linkage one it doesn't have enough throw to fully engage all four gears of the transfer case and two the angle of the actual linkage is pitched up like that so when i pull all the way forward it gets super steep and doesn't want to shift back it's just kind of pushing the pressure down instead of back so dropping this down should solve both problems if this doesn't solve the the angle issue i may have to just remake my linkage with more of a, a drop in it but i'm thinking i'm gonna go an inch i'm gonna try that it's just trial and error at this point i'm just gonna cut cut one an inch longer on the bottom and see how that works and that should fix i should fix our issue with this transfer case shifter Well, there's the new shifter. I kind of spiced it up a little bit and I did add an inch on top and I ended up adding two inches on bottom and it works perfect now. This thing is kind of tricky to get into gear without it moving. Doesn't like to shift too much, but it works. So I'm happy with that. We'll just have to powder coat that next time we're powder coating something. Well, our interior is about 90%. There's a couple of odds and ends. Like I said, I still want to figure out something 
with these seat belts. I don't know, it's really bugging me how I can't move the seat forward. I do have to go get some parts for the speakers to get those installed, but other than that, we got everything installed. We got the head unit, the cluster, obviously all the steering, uh, this whole center console. Shifter's good to go, pedals are good to go. This interior is, like I said, about 95%. So one last thing we gotta figure out is blinkers and hazards. They are not working. I could turn the hazards on and you can see they're just stuck on. These are, these are my little blinkers that are uh, actually just rock lights, but something's up with those. Uh, I, I have a feeling that it just needs an LED flasher. So I got these, um, there's a ground wire coming out of these that we have to ground. But these are for when you have like little LEDs that don't pull much power, you really need an LED style flasher. So we got one for the blinkers and the flashers. Um, so I'll swap those out. Let's see if that will fix that issue because the blinkers do nothing as well. It just, they just, the, the two blinkers uh, icons on the dash just light up. So they're not working at all. Let's swap these out, see if that'll fix it. All right guys, got those flashers in. Looks like we're working. We got blinkers there, there's the front, and the rear there. So it looks like, looks like that was the issue, just we needed the LED style flasher in there. We are good to go. Well guys, that's about it. So kind of the game plan is, we got to do a few more things to this before I wanna bring it back to the tuner. We gotta bring the whole truck into the tuner and get this thing dialed in so that we can actually go run it, go drive it, and kind of break in this engine, break everything in. So that's kind of the game plan. I want to get all the leaks fixed for one. My Hydro Boost unit started leaking. I got a leaky pan gasket on the transmission. My axle seal's leaking and I think that's I think that's it. I thought I had four leaks, but maybe it's three. But either way, I want to get all those leaks figured out. They're just bugging the crap out of me. I cannot stand leaks. So we got to tear the entire front axle apart. The Hydro Boost unit shouldn't be too bad. I still have to order up the seal kit. Hopefully I can find the seal kit for that and get that thing sealed up and then pan and gasket i don't know i don't know why that's leaking i just had that pan off did a filter and a new gasket for some reason it doesn't want to seal up so i bought an oem gasket we're going to try the oem gm gasket that should work but either way i'm gonna wrap this one up here guys we got the whole interior together now we can actually sit on something comfortable we got a shifter in it so we can shift it our transfer case shifter is working everything on the interior is working other than this seat belt issue that is bugging the hell out of me too. I, I I don't know how I never thought of it before. I don't know if there's, I mean, I don't really see orc around other than maybe fabbing up some sort of quick disconnect on the shoulder straps into that rear harness or into the rear roll cage. I may look at, I may try to fab some, some sort of quick disconnect up for that. But either way, that's in the future. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Anyway, guys, I am gonna wrap this one up here. Why don't you go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one.